What's up, y'all? BC, welcome back to another episode of Supreme Being. Uh, first and foremost, shout out to Team BC, my real estate team. If you're interested in joining the traditional or the investment side, you can contact me or go to join Team BC. Uh, team BC, join teambc.com. Sorry, I had a brain fart there for a second because we have so many Team BC websites, right? Also, shout out to Modern Success, my coaching program. Go to briancasella.com to see everything that I have to offer. All right, let's begin. So um, today, I, I really rolled around with a lot of ideas in my mind about what I wanted to do today for the podcast, right? And, you know, with so, so much stuff uh, floating around, I wanted to bring it back and do an episode on communication, right? Communication is something that I've been telling the masses, right? For a long time, it's what you got to focus on. It, it's the common denominator. If you do social media, guess what? Your communication skills determine if you just do regular posts and pictures, because you know damn well, if you write the right caption, it captures people's attention and it gets them to stay. If you do video, the number one thing is your communication, how you're dressed, how you carry yourself, how you speak. Because remember, I, although I didn't follow any of the traditional rules and did a lot of things in quotes wrong, my social media prior to censorship exploded. I creamed everybody. You can't deny that. If you haven't been around that long, then you wouldn't have known, right? But prior to two or three years ago, when I really started to get censored, I was creaming people on social media with lower quality, not the best equipment, right? All the fancy stuff. And I was just getting more followers, more likes. My channel, which I basically abandoned my original one, is just sitting there and it still gets more views and subscribers than most people who dedicate full time to their main channel, right? So that goes to show the power of communication. I don't say that shit to brag. I could care less about it. I started a new YouTube channel. I don't give a shit about my engagement, my likes, right? That stuff is all manipulated. I don't care. But I know my communication will allow me like it has the last two years to grow and expand and make more money and be more successful than I've ever been. But our world is so twisted. There's people who think because I have less engagement and all that crap that I'm somehow doing worse. It's funny. It cracks me up that people actually think that, right? But it's quite the opposite. But that, that thing that I really rest my confidence on, that I can stand on all the time is my understanding conceptually at the core of communication because I've communicated at a higher level for a very long time than most people ever will on this planet because I've dedicated myself to this stuff, right? I really have. So what I mean by that is a lot of these things, right? Number one is I get out there and I'm talking in front of people and putting myself in, in quotes, uncomfortable points and positions to communicate all the time. So this is the number one point to start with, right? It's your versatility in your communication. That's something you have to focus on and work on. How versatile are you with your communication in regards to how you can deliver the different types of people that you can interact with and impress upon and connect with like today, right? We met a client today over there in Miami beach and personality wise, looks wise, the complete opposite of me. He would see me and probably be terri uh, terrified of me in the street, for sure. But right away, broke the ice, started talking within a minute or two, a couple of conversational topics, boom. He's super comfortable with me, super grateful. Not a problem. Not a problem. Can you do that? And can you consistently do that? You can line up people like that to me all day and just like uh, knocking them down like pins, boom, 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 boom. And I do it effortlessly. And again, this is because of uh, about a decade now of my dedication to communication, understanding the craft and understanding the craft. So how versatile are you? Can you, like, if you're listening to me and you're in real estate or any kind of sales business, can you, can you attack with the same amount of, uh, of efficiency, different lead sources, right? Like in real estate, we have like the for sale by owner, the expire, the pre foreclosure, the probate, they just listed, just sold, right? Can you attack all of them with that same kind of zest and efficiency and confidence and results? Can you? That tells me a lot about your versatility. How about on, on the flip side, as you start growing and you become a leader, because all of you who want to become multi-millionaires, millionaires, high six figures, you're going to have to adopt that skill set of the leader which is something I've reserved for my coaching clients and really pushed only to people that I know are ready for. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? 
And how versatile are you? Can you manage multiple people at a time and different personality types? Because that in itself is a skill. That is not easy, ladies and gentlemen, not easy at all. How about on your toes? What if you're told something and asked a question that you don't know the answer to? How versatile are you to be able to be resourceful enough to get an answer? Are you? Can you talk your way out of a situation where you don't have an answer and you don't have a solution? I can. Can you? Can you deal with somebody who's extremely emotional to an extreme, either super happy and rambles on too much or upset or sad or angry? Because I've done it a million times without it affecting you. Because there's some people who can handle it, but they fumble and then they absorb all that energy and it just kills them on the inside, right? I can give you a tip for that. A quick way for you to resolve that is to immediately in your mind, designate the difference between listening to them and absorbing it, meaning you're taking it personally as if they're talking about you. So mentally, the image would be the first one where you absorb their energy, this negative energy or abundance of energy, whatever it is. They're looking at you, you're looking at them and you're facing each other. That would be the mental image. The one that you want to do is you want to assume that they're standing next to you and you guys are having a friendly conversation. That switch in mental imagery in your mind and also can be applied to presentations, right? You don't sit across from people. It's interrogational. You want to sit next to them, right? That's more friendly. That's less aggressive, right? It's less salesy. That's a tip for all of you. If you haven't been doing that, I recommend you start doing it, right? But that immediately lessens that blow that you feel like, oh, they're, you know, they don't like me or, oh, you know, they're, they're talking directly at me. They're, they're, they're upset at me, blah, blah, blah. No, they're not. You're just taking it that way. And how you take it determines how it's going to be processed by you and how it affects them and their communication. Because what you do in an exchange of communication, how you're responding, whether you're doing it right or wrong, will affect how the other party either deviates from their original tactic, continues with their current tactic, or how they adjust and move. Because it's always a back and forth when you communicate, right? There's three levels to a complete communication cycle. The origination, the in-between, the field in between me and you, that space, and then it being uploaded and duplicated in their mind. Duplication means understanding, duplicate. I say red cat and think it, and then I say it. In your mind, you duplicate red cat, boom. There we go, it's a complete communication cycle. So when you guys see those memes out there, communication, it's about comprehension because if you don't comprehend, then it's not, it's, it doesn't matter how you communicate, dude, that's wrong because comprehension is a part of the communication cycle. If there is no compre uh, comprehension, then there's no communication. You see, that's an example of meme culture and motivational quote culture going to extreme where now they start hyper analyzing and dissecting things and creating problems where there wasn't one or giving you uh, literally, as they would coin it, misinformation or half truth. Because technically that meme is right, but it's also wrong at the same time. And this is how people get confused. And it becomes this culture where we just share uh, the new interpretation of this quote and this and that. And it's just a waste of time. You really want to get better at communication? Step your game up. The first thing, versatility. You need to become more versatile. Now, I'm using this simple tech, uh, terminology because if I start using the more complicated words, people start getting confused because I don't know how well-studied people are in the art and science of communication, neuro-linguistic programming, right? etymology, syntax, hypnosis, right? conversational hypnosis, right? and all these other terms and technologies that we use for the mind. So versatility is very easy. Anybody can understand that. Become more versatile. Put yourself in those situations. This is more homework. This is step number two, right? Put yourself in those situations where you know you're not comfortable. If you're, uh, you get upset or flustered when you talk to somebody who's angry, go after the lead source where people are angry until you get comfortable doing it and you don't, you don't shy away from it. Why? That's the weak link in your chain. You're about to make more money if you handle that. If not, you're going to suffer and that's going to be your weak point and you will always run away from it. You will run away from it, all right? So number one is versatility. Number two is you yourself need to pick and enhance the style that you're going to go with, right? You have to pick an archetype of the type of communicator you're going to be, right? 
Do you consider yourself the emperor? You know, think back in history how the emperor would address his people. Are you the, the scribe, the messenger, right? I'm giving you random archetypes. These aren't just the only archetypes. I'm just giving you some off the top of my head. So you can kind of start to adapt a role and something that you like so you can emulate it. Now, eventually you're going to 100% develop your own style, but you want to start with a baseline of something. And many of you, there's probably some type of communicator that you identify with either the words that they use, their delivery, right? Everything about them, they're silky smooth. They're super powerful and everybody pays attention to them. They're magnetic, right? They have a lot of charisma when they speak. I don't know, it might be a pimp, right? Pimps have a lot of charisma when they speak and a lot of them speak quickly. They incorporate their body language a lot, right? Again, you may not like pimps or whatever, but you can't deny that they're good communicators. Look at preachers, religious preachers, right? Again, I'm not a religious guy, but I've recognized a lot of religious preachers that are damn good speakers. So I study them. Of course, I'm not above studying speakers. There's something I can take from a lot of people. Uh, who's that other guy? Eric Thomas, right? The hip hop preacher, right? Dubbed as like a motivational speaker, man, there's some great qualities to how he speaks. Very few people on this planet, I think, possess the passion and umph that he brings when he speaks. He basically yells at you, but in a very precise and well tempered, uh, tempered, sorry, well tempered way. So he's intense, but you don't feel like he's yelling at you. Right? So he, he knows how to do that and calibrate that correctly. There's other people who have more of, of a mysterious vibe when they speak, right? They're, they're, they're men of few words, but they're never coined as shy or introvert. But every single word that they say has weight. Some people are very slow speakers. Some people are super fast speakers. It just depends, right? But pick an archetype and go with it. What archetype do you want to go with? Create your own and start picking up from other people and adding layers to your game. That's how you get better. But you got to start somewhere. You have to start somebody that you model after. Again, you're not copying here. You're modeling after them. It's like if I give you a blueprint for success in sales and real estate and business and money, you're not copying me. And in a sense, kind of you are, but you're just using the model that I gave you. There's no shame in that. It's like a mentor and an apprentice, right? But pick an archetype. Who, who do you want to sound like? Who do you want to be like? Who, do you, who are you just magnetically drawn to as a speaker? I'm sure you can think of some. If I'm one of them, fantastic. Take some, some pieces from my game and add it to yours. But start there. Okay? Number three, identify the top two or three things that you already do well. So you give yourself some credit because all of you, regardless of where you're at, there are some things that you do well. And then on the flip side, find and pick the top two or three things that you know need the most work and attack both fronts, enhance your strengths, work on your weaknesses, right? Create a game plan. You know what? My volume is great. My rate of speech is great. However, my energy is low and my body language isn't the best because I don't incorporate it well. Okay, there you go. That's the, that's the start. Work on it, right? I'm going to make sure my voice is captivating. My volume's good. I'm going to, you know, clean it up a little bit. And I know my, my rate of speech is good. So maybe, you know, to make it a little better, I can work on slowing down a little bit or speeding up so I have more versatility in my game. But I got to work on the other stuff right? I got to work on the other stuff, like the body language. I really got to incorporate it and get some movement in there and get my energy up, right? And know, hey, when I'm telling a story, does the story call for particular emotion? Well, if it does, and you're telling a story about being excited and you sound monotone like this, it's not going to work, dude. It's not going to work. I know my energy is good. Same thing with my body language. That's one of the biggest compliments I get from people. Like, man, you move well with what you speak about. Well, yeah, well, this is practice and practice and practice and implementation and implementation at a high level. But see, I took this serious enough to treat it like homework and write things down. As much as people claim they've been studying me for years, I don't think they're writing stuff down about what they want to improve in themselves as a communicator. If I asked them, how do you see yourself being as an ideal communicator? Most people wouldn't have an answer for me or they would make shit up on the spot as if I wouldn't be able to figure out that they're making shit up. You know, it's pretty funny. But you have to take the shit serious, man. If you don't, you're just wasting your time and you're no different than anybody else who just watches videos mindlessly and doesn't do anything with it. Where do you want to take your communication? Do you want to be a leader of a, a company of 50 people, 100 people? 
Do you just want to be able to go out and create connections? Are you looking because you're like me and you move and you're going to move or you have moved to a new city, a new state, and you have to start all over again with your social circles and friends? Why? Why do you want to do this, right? Even identifying and getting crystal clear on that is huge because then you create a game plan based on that. The person who wants to become a, a, a touring and, and, and speaker who gets paid 50 grand a speech versus somebody who just wants to build their social circle, those are going to be two different game plans that I give if I'm working with them. You know what I mean? It's not going to be the same thing, but you got to know where you're going. Where's the destination? We can start from there and reverse engineer and connect those dots, create a plan for you. You can do it for yourself. That's how you start. But man, people got to start taking communication more serious. All these platforms that, that people use, it's a form of communication. Everything goes down to that. Anybody listening to me, you'd be happier, more fulfilled, have better relationships, make more money, be more successful in your career, have more respect of people, get more followers, all that. If you became a better communicator, you know it. This is why when people get around me immediately, they're like, bro, I got to get on your coaching and do this and get closer to you because they know and they realize the fucking power of being in the proximity of that. We don't just talk this shit. We live it. We live it. Now, I may be wrapped up in a shell that's different than what people would expect or what they're comfortable with, but I don't give a shit. You cannot deny the fact that I dedicate myself to this shit. I live it, breathe it, eat it, sleep it, shit it 24-7. 24-7. And that's why I've been urging people on every platform that I do at every level. You have to make this shit a priority. And it starts with every single day. You want to become a better communicator? Get your ass out there and communicate. Hell, go out with a chain on that has a big sign on it that says, talk to me, to force people to talk to you, because they will. This shit is fun, man. This is enjoyable. This is the epitome of the human experience, communication. Imagine if we didn't communicate with each other. Imagine what life would be like. We're so fucked up that we think that what we see on the screens of our, our phones is more real than reality when it's the fucking opposite. That's why we're so easily manipulated. We don't communicate anymore. And when we do communicate, we fucking suck at it. So even if we don't agree on things or we, we, we want to show somebody something, right? Maybe they're wrong. We want to explain to them the right thing. We can't even do it because our communication is garbage, garbage. This is something, especially if you're an adult, you need to teach this to the next generation and the children. And if you're a parent, this is the epitome of importance right here. Imagine the, the, the quality of life your children will have if you teach them and breed them and build them and train them to be well-oiled and greased communicators. Man, think about how many more friendships they're going to have, how they're not going to struggle in relationships and be able to, to live a normal life and not feel like they have this social anxiety and all this crap. If I have a kid, I'm going to have him talking to strangers when, when he's real little, get him real comfortable with that. So going into adulthood, him, uh, you know, striking up conversations, wanting to do something entrepreneurial will be second nature. Even if they don't choose to do it, that's fine. But at least it'll be in them and they'll have that choice and not be held back this, by this bullshit fear. And be caught up in this whole introvert, extrovert crap, which I never believed in in the first place. But make it a priority. Do something. What are you going to do after this episode? This is a 20-minute episode that's coming to an end. What are you going to do once you shut this off and this is over? What's the first step? Get to it and make communication a priority again for you. Otherwise, you're going to suffer and suffer and suffer and nothing's going to change because it will always come back to this. Always. Okay, my friends? So I'll leave you here. That's it for this one. If you're interested in Team BC investment or traditional, go to jointeambc.com or message me briancasella.com for all my courses and products. If you're interested, we'll see you on the next one. Peace.